this has turned out to be very handy which is a bit of wood with a cut in it and you can rest the wheel against it and it stops it sliding around everywhere so on this we're looking at the the valve side on a Lambretta and a Vespa um, you, is the side you need to fit from because there's a shorter distance between the well and the outer rim whereas if you're trying to fit from the other side the distance from the well to the rim is bigger so we'll sit that down there now you have to make sure you get your rotation right so tyre on a Lambretta and a Vespa on the valve side of these will have um, a rotation which is anti-clockwise so that tyre has got a rotation and it's pointing clockwise so this tyre needs to put it on the other way up rotation anti-clockwise we're laughing but this is something that confuses people um, this is a bi-directional tyre this is a Conti twist um, and it fits a different way around depending on whether it's rear use faces that way or if it's front use faces that way the point of that is because the carcass of the tyre is constructed it's stronger in one direction than another but the strength is required one rotation if it's a driving wheel but the forces are stronger in braking if it's used on the front so it's to do with the way the carcass is made not to do with the way the sipes are cutting to remove water it will work either way around but it means that if you are building a wheel that you're going to use as a spare it's a bit of an inconvenience because if it's something like a Vespa where the wheels are interchangeable then if you build the tyre correctly for use on the rear and you want to fit it on the front it's actually the wrong way around I wouldn't let that stop me using it to get home on um, but ideally you want to fit it the correct way and certainly if you've got a decent MOT tester they'll spot a tyre that's fitted in the wrong orientation so when you're building the wheel you have to make that decision know what you're doing straight away so you need to soak up the tyre <coughs> fit it away, pull it towards you and I'm going to use my big tyre lever just to get it started So now I can use the shorter one. The advantage of the shorter ones is they go right inside the wheel. Okay. Same deal. The shorter one. Go right down. Two together. It's not too much. One at a time. Last one. There we go. Okay, so that's that side fitted. Up this no side, no right. same deal. Put it on the far side. And fight with it a bit, they make it look very easy on the SRP video, but it's not.
the secret to this is having a short enough um, tire lever to get from this angle. I think we got it. That's in. There we go. Now, because the valve core is out, I should just be able to pump this up. And get it to go pop. Right, if you have a tyre that's not sitting very well against the rim when you try and inflate it and all the air escapes, the solution is to go around with more tyre soap around the uh, edge of the tyre, you separate the two, put more tyre soap in, and then also you put a ratchet strap around the circumference of the wheel, and you tighten it up, and squashing the tyre in this way helps to spread the, uh, the two side walls against the rim. Then when you inflate it, hopefully it'll pop. But what you end up with is a very, very tight strap, which is actually quite dangerous and difficult to undo. Um, you have to do it very carefully because there's a lot of tension in it. So just be beware when you're undoing that. Put the valve core back in. Don't over tighten it. Once the tyres are up on the bead, they normally stay there. So, pop it up, stick 30 in it for the rear of a Lammy. Job done. Valve cap on, and the wheels are ready to fit. 